we're coaches, we're teachers, we educators. And, you know, it's important that we don't lose sight of that. And, 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 and it's something we took with our second Zoom was, you know, I sent the guys, and it's something I, I, I'm i not embarrassed by this, but I've been here seven, going to my seventh year, and I didn't know about the, the Black Wall Street. I didn't know. Right. And uh, so I sent our players. It's not taught in the history books. Yeah. So I, I sent my players uh, about an eight-minute uh, uh, video about the history of Black Wall Street. And um, because I, I heard LeBron James and, and, and Westbrook are going to do, Russ Westbrook are going to do it documentary uh, talking about uh the, the Tulsa massacres so what I what I and then we we got back together and I said listen let's let's how can we uh combine some of the things that are going on today with the little history a little education and and what we did was we we met uh Monday morning at 10 o'clock and and we started our walk at 10 14 which is George Floyd's birthday to honor him. And we called it a unity walk. We didn't call it a protest. We call it a unity walk. And, and then once we started our walk at 1014, we got to the end of Delaware and we stopped and we, we, we had a moment of silence for 27 seconds. And in that 20, you know, that was for Brianna Taylor, whose birthday was last Friday and she it was her 27th birthday. And then we started our 2.23 mile walk to the uh, Greenwood Culture Center. And that is 2:23 is Ahmad a- a- Arbery's birthday. So we wanted to get we want to honor those three tragedies, but also when we got to the culture center, we were fortunate someone was in there and allowed our players to go in and to uh, spend some time in there, and uh, and, I th- and, I, and just talk and get some feedback from our players afterwards. They they really appreciated that because it is it's a it's a part of the history here. Is historic, but it's part of the history here that people whisper. They don't really want to talk about it. And uh, but I think that's part of the healing process is us coming and and having discussions about these very difficult things to talk about. And and to me, education is a big part of that. You know, we're kind of <clears throat> we're doing some of the same things, but maybe spinning it a little bit different. Um, we're gonna partner with a group that uh, it's called Building Advocacy, but basically uh, we're gonna do some virtual training with some of the leaders on our football team. We have some ways, some different ways that we obviously, uh, with the sheer numbers, you know, just trying to make sure guys get to know each other on a personal level. And so bringing some of our, some of those captains of those teams in and having them kind of train virtually over this. And then we as coaches are going to do the same thing, but we're going to try to, it's kind of a peer teaching deal. So obviously they kind of get trained and and we're going to allow our players to kind of choose the stuff that we want to do. There's a ton of them, uh, but we're going to bring them in, kind of train them and then let them actually start these conversations with our players. And and they kind of go and, and basically teach, if you will, you know, I, you, you think back me with my background, you know, starting in the education and kind of working my way through it, you know, until you actually sit down and start to teach something and you're the greatest understanding comes, you know, when you have to physically tell somebody about something, you know, sitting in a class, yes, you're going to learn. But when you start teaching it, uh, you have a greater understanding of what's going on. So. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to pick, allow our team to kind of pick the the topics that we want to cover. Uh, we're going to set those up where they are a week long, where you kind of go out to your section of the team and, and y'all discuss it, talk about it, teach it. And then we're going to bring everybody back together. And then we're going to kind of create those conversations across the board within your groups about what y'all talked about, what was uh, the dialogue, what did you learn, everybody gives their input and then we have a big team discussion about all of it and doing the same thing with our coaches as we work through it. I'm, I'm really excited about this part of it because I just feel like it's a way to create a lot of different conversations. It's a way to continue to grow and educate ourselves. And uh, I think that starts with us as coaches, as we work our way through with our team. So uh, 
you know, I hope our team is excited about it as I am. But I think it's going to be a really good thing as far as, as us continuing to grow as a group and continuing to push and stay active in this. You know, Matilda and everybody was talking about, we don't want this to be, uh, you know, a weekend flash in a pan thing, right? I mean, we've got to continue to keep educating ourselves and continue to keep pushing uh, for these changes to happen. Um, we, we talk about, you know, we've, we've done the protest and we've been silent. We've got to continue to keep doing those things until we get to where we're, we're trying to get to. And, uh, and so for us, I think this, I hope, is going to keep educating us and keep us continuing to work towards our ultimate goals and, and give us some direction as we continue to work down that path. Marty, I will say, I think, I think I, I, this one has a different feel because I what agree. We, Absolutely. What, what, like what we're doing right now, this has never happened. No, and, I agree. And, and I, I think the communications, the dialogue that's, that's happening now is never, this never done before. And I just, I'm like you and Matilda, I, I, I don't want us to lose the stamina to keep doing this, mm -hmm. the endurance to keep fighting and uh, to keep encouraging, to keep teaching. But um, it just has a different feel when I look at the, the diversity and all the protests and, and not just in the United States, but across the world. I think it is something that has a different feel about this one. And, and I'm hopeful. And I think we're all in this call, I can tell we're all driven uh, to keep pushing forward for the change and keep moving that needle and keep loving one another, keep, you know, preaching love, preaching care for each other. And I think that's big. That's, that's it. That's what it is. And uh, it's amazing. I wish the, you know, we talk about locker rooms, all of us got locker rooms. That's what we would what the world would be like a locker room. Cause what do we Absolutely. teach in our locker room? We teach in our locker room to care for each other, to play, to fight for each other, to love one another, to respect one another. And that's, that's what we're all striving for. That's what we want. Absolutely. And, and we all talk about it all the time, especially with our locker rooms. I mean, that's the best and biggest melting pot anywhere, right? I mean, and, and you're crossing so many different boundaries when they're, where you're talking about a guy from the country, a guy from the city. Uh, we can talk about all the different racial parts of that. Um, guys that come from money, guys that come from nothing. Uh, there's so many different variables within that, but all of a sudden you put guys in a locker room and, you know, they work together. They, they learn about each other. And that's the part that we have to continue. I think as coaches is to make sure that guys are not just, Hey, I got a locker beside this cat and I, I know his name. Right. And I know and in this and I know a little bit about him, but I mean, like dive into him. And, and find out, you know, who is this guy? Uh, earn. And, and, and we have to, I think, try to help initiate sometimes those things. And sometimes I think all of us, myself included, we know a lot of people, we scratch the surface and that's it. And, and we never dive into them and, and find out who they really are deep inside uh, and, and what they're about. And that those relationships turn to a different level because all of us on this call have, have been involved in college athletics. We still have great relationships that we formed during those days. Uh, yet all of us probably could have done a better job of expanding that and, and getting better. And, uh, you know, I think that's what we're trying to encourage within all of our locker rooms is dive deep down in mm -hmm guy beside you and, and guys throughout your locker room and, and learn about them because I'm telling you uh, you'll be amazed uh, at what you'll find mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with all that and um, it is a different a different movement and I think there's a different level of accountability attached to this and our student athletes are going to hold us accountable I think that's what we're finding out more than anything through this they uh, and I, when I was on the call yesterday, a national call, and I talked about how when a lot of us played ball, you know, and I played ball 30 years ago, and, you know, we, we did everything and anything that our coaches asked us to do. 
Well, these <laughs> these kids today they ask questions. They're they're much more analytical. Um, <laughs> That's right, <laughs> as you know, because uh, we're raising a lot of them, and, and I have kids that are these kids' age. But um, you have to tell them why. Mm-hmm. You have to tell them why. They'll do it, they, and they'll 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 be cooperative and and do the things that we need them to do to train to become champions. But they want to know why. And so on this level now, um, if, if we're not involved with this, if we're not proactive and uh, on top of it, they're going to question us and they're going to hold our feet to the fire. So um, I just appreciate all the things that you're doing and, and kind of segue into that. Another part of this is, um, and, and because of travel schedules, I know some teams don't have as much time to get involved with what may be in a different site or a different city, whether it's uh, civil rights museums or historical places. I know Matilda's done a really good job with that. Um, and, and Frank has kind of done some of that with his team as well. So I just wanted to open it up and maybe Matilda, you can start and talk about some of the things that you've done with your team when you've been on the road. Um, just just when we, when we do our scheduling, we try to do a trip every year where it would be somewhere that our kids wouldn't normally get to go. For instance, several years ago, we went to Alaska. None of our kids had ever been to Alaska. None of them will probably ever go back. But it was about the, about the experience. We took them to a, a zoo. We took them to an, uh, another animal place. We took them uh, to a dog sled farm. Uh, we did some things in addition to playing in a basketball tournament. Uh, about four years ago, we were playing in Washington, D.C. We went out and played American University. And we took an extra day and the, we wanted to make sure we got to the African-American History Museum. Well, it was hard to get into. I mean, we, we did everything we could and it, it was like two days before we left, before we knew for sure we were gonna be able to get in. I mean, we, we had everybody in the world. We were writing uh, uh, senators and I mean, we were pulling out every stop. And finally, we had a breakthrough. And so we spent about four hours in the African American History Museum. And, um, you know, that, that sounds- you know, whether they were black or white, didn't matter. They, they really just absorbed that, mm. that information. And, you know, it, it's an it's a f- amazing uh, museum. And, uh, you know, if we have an opportunity to go back and do that again, we want to. And then, you know, they have the Martin Luther King um, Museum in Memphis. And we have tried for three or four years now to try to work something in. But that Memphis trip, it's kind of hard for us to get in and out of there anyway. And uh, so we haven't been able to. But that's on the list. You know, we, we've got we've to um, get our kids involved in that. So, again, it goes back to trying to find something that we can do that's that's uh, beneficial to them, that's educational, and something that probably they haven't done before and, and may not get an opportunity to again. I mean, that's, I think that's the, the privilege that we have in college athletics is that we can t- take, we can educate kids outside of the classroom. And so that, that's always been our purpose is try to educate them outside the classroom. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, we've got uh, that. That's on my bucket list, Matilda, is to get the guys to DC and try to schedule a game. And I haven't been able to do that, but uh, um, uh, it's a bucket list of mine. I haven't done it yet. And uh, that's awesome. And we've done the Memphis uh, a couple of times with uh, a couple of different teams. And uh, that's pretty awesome, too. Uh, that uh, I encourage everybody, if you have a chance, that to take your kids to Memphis, it, it's a really cool educational experience. Yeah, and I, I've been to the African American Museum a couple of times, and you're right, Matilda. Especially four years ago, when the place was brand new, almost it's it's it was almost impossible to get into it. You have to do all the things that you said. Um, for anybody else, I do know one of the museum curators now, who covers the sports area, and uh, so if you're up in that area, let me know, and maybe we can work something out with him. And what's interesting, and, and I was on that trip when. Uh, with men's basketball, because I think we were down there for the tournament yes. and, um, mm-hmm. and, and went to uh, the Lorraine Motel, which I had been to years ago. But 
what it did for me was it gave me a lot more interaction with the student athletes. And, and, and you also find out how old you are when you're hanging around these athletes. I don't have to tell you guys that because there, there was a display there and it was a rotary telephone there. And one of the guys was like, what's that? <laughs> you know, and then, so I, and then so I sat there and explained to him what the rotary phone was and told him that I remember when email really came online and when the internet mm. was created and all this stuff. So it just, uh, it, it, and you know, they can't, they can't imagine that. But um, it just created a lot of great dialogue and, and like what I said on the national call yesterday is that we don't have all the answers, none of us. And sometimes we don't know what to say. And so that's why, um, and, and sometimes it's, it's okay to tell the student athletes, we don't have all the answers, we don't know what to say, but then to open up the dialogue with them on whatever area it is, it, it just stretches into so many other areas um, that you may not have even thought about originally. So again, it's about an educational process um, and, and those types of things.